Hello everyone, Gay Lesbian here, and today I am going to be reviewing a game that I finished playing last Sunday on my gaming channel, Transformers Devastation. Now, without further ado, let's get into the review. Now, first off, I just want to talk about the plot. Now, the game never specifies where or when the game takes place. So, in case you don't know about the game and you go like, Uh, James, you retarded, you forgot the part where you say when and where the game takes place. It's like, well, the game doesn't specify, and I could care less, honestly. Um, the plot, well, the backstory begins where Nova Prime, a powerful Autobot, I don't want to say leader, but a, uh, yeah, Nova Prime, uh, has realized that gay ass thread. So Nova Prime has realized that Cybertron will no longer be able to support the Transformers, and thus he takes the Ferrotaxis, the thing that contains the Cybertronian culture in it. Just as they say in the game, it literally contains their culture inside of it. And he goes on the ship called the Proud Star and while he is looking for uninhabited worlds to cyberform so that the Transformers can live on another world, since, as you may know, war ravaged Cybertron. The Transformer Cyber, the Transformer Civil War ravaged Cybertron, and that's why he's looking for another world to cyberform. In case you do not know. So, while he's on this mission, just as the game describes, a darkness fell over him and burrowed into him, driving him mad. And after that, uh, his mission, which they call it a mission in the game, Optimus Prime refers to it as a mission, his mission is not exactly good at that point as something has manipulated him and so the ship goes to earth and over an unspecified time later because the game doesn't care for date or location Megatron finds the ship and uses it as his base as it is underground for some reason. I don't know why. Because reasons. And he is trying to cyberform Earth along with the Insecticons that are powered by the Plasma Core which is on the ship. It's on the Proud Star, so it's not just something that Megatron brought along. And you, as the Autobots, are supposed to stop Megatron from cyberforming the city. They just call it the city. Now it is time to move on 
to the gameplay aspect and what I think about the gameplay. The gameplay is nice. I thought that it ran smoothly. I really loved it. I liked the melee aspect as I briefly touched over in whenever I was talking, whenever the credits were rolling in the finale video, after I finished the game, after I completed it, after I defeated Megatron for the last time. It's a little bit unfortunate that you do not get to play as the Decepticons. You only get to play as the Decepticons in uh, the missions after you complete the game as Nemesis Prime. You do not get to play as any other Decepticon, which is rather unfortunate, but I will get to play as the Decepticons in Transformers War for Cybertron, but that's beside the point. Uh, I liked that the bosses were, which I was playing on, hold on, let me get through my thought. Uh, I liked that the bosses were challenging. Like, they weren't too tough, but they weren't too easy to beat. Now, you might be like, James, I saw your videos, and you are lying. You are fucking stupid. You struggled with Megatron. It's like, yes, I did. That was a real challenge, but it wasn't impossible. Okay. I was playing on the second hardest difficulty. It goes Scout, Warrior, and then Commander. In terms of getting the easy, medium, and hard. I was playing on the Warrior. Which is the medium difficulty, in effect. And there was really never a dull moment. Just as I said, while the credits were rolling too, that there was really never a dull moment playing the game, except for that Sentry Bot fight whenever I was battling it with Grimlock. That was a little bit unnecessary and drawn out. Well, not really drawn out, but it was strung out. It was just tedious. I I didn't like that. Other than that, I completely loved the game. I loved the gameplay. And I would look forward to recording and uploading a Transformers Devastation video every single time I would do it. Now... I think it is time to move on to the characters. Now, just as I said in the last bit, the gameplay portion, you do not get to play as the Decepticons, so let me just get the playable characters out of the way first. Uh, that does not include the missions after the game, by the way. So no, I'm not going to mention Nemesis Prime as a playable character. Now, the Autobots are the playable characters. Just as I said for the plot, you play as the Autobots. And the Autobots, the small band of Autobots include Optimus Prime, Grimlock, Wheeljack, Bumblebee, and Sideswipe. And I guess you could include Nova Prime as a character, so I'm going to add him as a character because he does make an appearance in the game. He makes an appearance in a couple of the cutscenes and in a scene after the credits. So if you did watch my finale video, and you watched all the way through the credits, or if you've seen all the way through the credits, then you will have seen that Nova Prime scene. I'm not gonna 
ruin it for anyone, but it's there. YouTube it up after you've finished this video if you haven't seen it. So those are the Autobots in the game, and you can play as all the Autobots except for Nova Prime. And the Decepticons in the game include Megatron, Soundwave, Blitzwing, Starscream, Thundercracker, uh, Skywarp. Yeah, I couldn't remember the last Seeker's name. Uh, Shockwave. I think I mentioned Shockwave. Megatron, Blitzwing, Starscream, Thundercracker, Skywarp, Shockwave. Ah, uh, yes, the Constructicons. I'm not going to name them all individually because I don't remember all their names off the top of my head. And there are six of them. I think I just said that, but regardless, there are six of them, and I don't remember all of them off the top of my head. So that's six. Count six there. And then they combine to form Devastator. And funny enough, with the combiners, you have Menasaur too, but what's funny about it is that you only see Menasaur by himself. Or yeah, Menasaur is the combiner. I sometimes get the two confused between Motormaster and Menasaur. Menasaur is the robot that the Stunticons, Stunticons combine into. And Motormaster is the only one of the Stunticons that you see in game. I do not know why you do not see... Or, well, you see the other five, but I do not know why you do not encounter the other five. Like, you do the Constructicons, you fight all the Constructicons in the game. Ah, yes, and then you have the Insecticons. And then you have that Sentry Bot, if you want to count that. And then there's Soundwave's Minicons, which include Laser Beak... Ravage, Buzzsaw, Rumble, Frenzy. Yes, that's what I'm talking about whenever I'm talking about Minicons here. And then there are the generic Decepticons like the Ground Soldiers and stuff like that. And I think... That is it for the Decepticons. If I'm missing any, then please comment down below who I forgot. Now, I think it is time to talk about what I really loved about the game, you know? What I liked about the game. I loved that it was an 80s, well not really an 80s, but it was a G1 inspired game. And it was a very well done Transformers game. Which, there are only one of three of those games. If you're a Transformers fan, you know what the other two are. I don't even need to say. As I touched on it, while the credits were rolling, I said that I liked that you got to pick which Autobot you got to play as for pretty much the entire game except for the opening part where you play as Optimus Prime if you load up the game for the first time 
and the final battle. Whenever you defeat Megatron on the ground, you can play as any Autobot, but then when you fight him in space, you're locked in as Optimus Prime. Other than that, you could choose one of the five Autobots I mentioned in the character section. And I was talking about rather than other games, one of the one of the examples that came to my head whenever I thought of games that don't let you pick which character you want to play as are uh, Mario games. And no, you do not have to unlock the characters unlike in Super Mario 64. So you can play as Grimlock right after you play as Optimus Prime. You can play as Bumblebee after that. You could play the whole thing as Wheeljack. You could play the whole thing as Sideswipe. You could take turns like I did. Like I tried to spread it out, you know, give the characters playtime. I know it's not evenly split, but I tried to diverse it. I tried to spread it out. And just as I said, I liked the melee aspect. I loved the battles. And just as I said for... And just as I said earlier, I liked that... The bosses, like... Your, the first boss is Devastator, for example. Devastator... Yes, I switch out the two. Devastator is not too tough and he's not too easy it's a challenge yes but it's not infuriating and it's not a letdown in terms of like that's it I just easily killed him so I liked that because in some bo because in some games the bosses are just way too easy. And it's like... Really? Really? And in other games, the bosses are way too hard. You go like... What the fuck? I can't beat this yet. What? This is fucking retarded. And... Yeah. Now it is time to give my final thoughts on the game. Now, you might be asking, James, with all this that you've said, or with all that you've said, would you recommend that I would buy the game? I bought it on Steam, by the way. Uh, I would say yes, but not at the price that it was at whenever I bought it. Well, I bought it at a discount. I bought it for 75 or 80% off. I can't remember. But one of those two. Yeah, I think it was 80 because the game, whenever I bought it last April, without the 80% discount, it was... Fifty but fifty dollars. Now I've seen a lot of people say that it is not worth it buying it for fifty dollars, and because it is so short, well, it's not that short, but I'm sorry, but it's not quite worth fifty dollars. I wouldn't spend that much on a game. I wouldn't have spent that much on this game. I bought it for $10. I would even buy it for $20. I would buy it for 30 
at least 25. I would buy it at least 25 or potentially 30, but not 50. So if you can, sorry about that. So if you can get it for a discount, like 30 or less, I would say buy it. This, this game also became one of my favorite games that I've ever played as just as I said there was never a dull moment and that contributed to this game being one of my favorites that I've ever ever played and one of the best games that I've ever played and just as I said in the finale video it was quite a ride and if you watched on the gaming channel then I appreciate it it was fun having you along with the ride it was fun having you along for the ride and uh, lastly I just want to thank Platinum Games for making such a beautiful game that made my nostalgia boner for G1 shoot to the sky. And I hope they make a sequel. They definitely left it open to a sequel. If you watch the end of the credits, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. But yeah, just as I said, I would like to end this review by thanking the people that made this game, Platinum Games, for making a game that made my nostalgia boner go up to the sky. And yeah, I think that will do it. Autobots. Transform and roll out.